Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to do a ripple stitch, crochet ripple stitch. Um, for this tutorial, I am just using Burnett Premium Yarn and a five millimeter crochet hook. So the ripple stitch is worked in multiples of 12 plus three. Okay, so we're going to begin by making our starting loop. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to do 24. So yarn over and pull through the loop. This is how you make your chain. So we're going to make a starting chain in multiples of 12. And as I said, I'm going to be doing 24 for the purpose of this tutorial. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, oops, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 19 20, 1, 2, 3, 24. Um, if you, for whatever project you might be working on, um, Clearly, I'm just doing a little swatch here for the purpose of a tutorial for you. So you can go ahead and pause the video, work your starting chain however long you need it to be. Just be sure that it is in multiples of 12. When you've finished making your starting chain in multiples of 12, you're gonna add three to the end. One, two, three. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna double crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So one, two, three, and four. We're gonna work a double crochet. So you're gonna yarn over your hook, push it through that fourth chain, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So now we've got three loops on our hook. You're gonna yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, and pull through those last two loops. Okay? So this is going to be like we're starting our row <clears throat> with two double crochets our chain three so that we made our starting chain in multiples of 12 and then we added three to the end it's because this chain three is going to count as a double crochet okay so when we finish every round uh, sorry when we finish every row you are going to do a chain three before you turn your work and that chain three is going to count as a double crochet. So technically right now, this is going to count as two double crochets um, that we're starting our row with. Now we're going to begin our ripple stitch pattern. So we're going to double crochet once into each of these next three chains. So you're going to yarn over your hook, push it through the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through those next two loops. So that's one double crochet, two, and three. Okay, so now we're gonna work on our first dip. So we're gonna work a double crochet decrease. You're gonna yarn over your hook, push it into that chain, that next chain there, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Yarn over, push your hook into the next chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through the last two loops on your hook. So now we've taken these two chains and we've turned it into one stitch. That's a double crochet decrease. Okay, so now we're going to do that again. We're going to do another double crochet decrease. So you're going to yarn over your hook, push it through the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, push your hook in the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those first two loops, yarn over, pull through the last three loops. So you can see that your, your, um, your work is starting to pull a little bit because this is gonna be our first dip in our ripple stitch. Now we're gonna work a double crochet into each of the next three chains.
Okay, so you can see it start to take shape a little bit more now that you've continued on. And the further you go in your work, it's after the next row or two, you're going to really start to see your ripple stitch um, take effect. Okay, so now we're going to work on our peak. So we're going to double crochet twice into this next chain space. So work just a regular double crochet. And then you're going to work another one in that exact same chain space. And we're going to do it again, another two double crochets in that following chain space. And we are going to separate our dips and peaks working three double crochets in between. <clears throat> pardon me in between so we're going to do one double crochet into each of those next three chain spaces and now we're going to do another dip so we're going to do our double crochet decrease and another double crochet decrease. We're going to do one double crochet into each of the next three chains. Okay, and so now you can really start to see it take shape. So depending on how, what project you're working on, how long your, um, your row is, you can go ahead and pause this video, get to this space where I am now, where you're going to have at the end of your row, one chain space left. So go ahead and continue on working your dips and peaks, making sure to work three double crochets between each dip and peak. If you need help seeing how to do any of these, just wind back a little bit, um, but come back to me when you get to the end and you've got your one chain left. So working into that last chain, we're gonna do two double crochets into that very last chain. As I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to start and end every single row with two double crochets. So now we're gonna do our chain three and turn our work and this chain three is counting as a double crochet so right here into this first stitch that's right at the bottom of our chain three we're going to do a double crochet this double crochet that we're working right now is counting as our two that we're starting our row with this is not counting as number one of the three that are going to be in between our dips and peaks so now that we've started our row with our two double crochets, our, our chain three that counts as double crochet and our second double crochet here in that same space, now we will begin counting our three double crochets. So you're gonna work one double crochet into each of those next three stitches. And now we're gonna work our dip. You wanna really make sure that you're working all of your dips into the dip of the, from the previous row and all of your peaks on top of the peaks from the previous row. Okay, so now we're gonna work our dip. So we're gonna do our double crochet decrease. And another double crochet decrease. And then our three double crochets that will separate our dip and peak. And now we're going to do our peak, which is two double crochets into each of the next two stitches. our three double crochets to separate our dips and peaks. Another dip 
So double crochet decrease twice. Our three double crochets, I'm just going all the way to the end of this row because I want to show you there is a little bit of a difference when you're ending on a when you're doing your chain, your starting chain, working on that versus working in the rest of the rows. Because when you're left at the end here, um, you were left with your one little chain, right? So now you're left with, this is that chain three um, that counted as a double crochet, right? So you're gonna work your two double crochets to end this row, you're working it into the top of that chain three. So two double crochets. Now you will chain three, turn your work, do your second double crochet because that chain three counts as a double crochet. So now we've started this row with our two double crochets. Now you will begin your count of one, two, three double crochets, work a dip. One, two, three double crochets, work a peak. One, two, three double crochets, work a dip. One, two, three double crochets, and then end with two double crochets in the top of that chain three. Chain three, turn your work, and you're just gonna continue on like this. You can really start to see your work take shape. I love this stitch. It's a little bit tricky when you're getting, when you're first learning it, I think maybe you're like, you know what, this isn't tricky at all. This is a very basic stitch, and that's awesome. Um, if you had a little bit of trouble with sort of like, I used to have a hard time with the whole, okay, why, why does the chain three count as a double crochet? Why do I have to start and end every row with a double crochet? Like just trying to figure all this out. And it's really, it just really helps with the edges. It helps to keep the shape. It is necessary. Okay, so I guess the most important thing that you have to remember when you're doing a project working with a ripple stitch is you wanna make sure that you're working in multiples of 12 plus three, okay? Um, because that's how you're gonna keep everything in a perfect count. And also if along the way you have an extra stitch at the end or something, you know that you've picked up or dropped a stitch somewhere. So definitely I like that. It's not so necessary to be counting stitches with this kind of, um, with a project using this stitch because it's pretty self-explanatory. You're gonna know by the end without even counting your stitches if you have picked up an extra or dropped one. So I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Please definitely take a moment to give me a like and a subscribe. Um, have a look at some of the helpful links that I included in the description below um, and check out my other video tutorials that I have available. There's lots of full projects on there and I have some really great ones coming up using this stitch. So keep an eye out for those or go ahead and visit my website, um, diyfromhome.com. And you can always search in the little search bar there for even just ripple stitch. And you will see all the patterns I have available using this stitch. I hope you enjoyed. Have a great day.